We had a valuable input from the United Nations Special Representative to Libya, Mr. Salame, and NATO Secretary General, Mr. Stoltenberg, on Libya. Recent development shows that the crisis may spiral out of control. And today we wanted to send a strong signal of unity and engagement. We are in agreement about the need to engage more strongly before it's becoming too late. Mr. Salame has warned us again, he did in the past councils, but uh, he insisted on the fact that in Libya there are several risks. These risks are increasing. First, the terrorism risk. More and more is being detected the presence of uh, fighters coming from Syria and also from Sudan. Second, the migration risk. There are almost 700,000, according with his figures, 700,000 people coming from sub-Saharan Africa and from other countries. All of them are working in Libya. Not all of them want to go to Europe, but uh, depending on the situation in Libya, depending on the situation in Libya, they will, they will go to go because they may lost, they may lose their jobs depending on the situation. Third risk is the risk of destabilization the whole region from Libya, Libya wide spreading to Sahel. On the fourth, a new geopolitical scheme, new actors are appearing in Libya, Russia and, and Turkey, and the whole central Mediterranean geopolitical can be changed. So we have a, a strong set of reasons to move from rhetoric to action, and I have the mandate to work in order to make our diplomatic outreach to bring to a political solution on the framework of the Berlin process. But hoping that the parties can reach a ceasefire, hoping that the parties can reach a ceasefire, and we will contribute to it, and hoping that the Berlin process can reach a political agreement, we will have to focus on monitoring the ceasefire, on controlling the arms embargo, and other security measures based on the experience of Operation Sophia. And there is a strong agreement among ministers to ask me to present proposal on these three points to the next council or after this agreement on the ceasefire can be reached. We are not going to do just an agreement for ceasefire. If it happens, and if there is an agreement on the framework of the Berlin process, I insist we will have to take measures in order to contribute to monitor the ceasefire and control arms embargo. On Iraq. The region cannot afford another war. The region cannot afford another war, and we call for an urgent de-escalation and maximum restraint to every part. The crisis risks jeopardizing years of effort to stabilize Iraq, especially given its implication for the decisive work of the global coalition against Daesh. We condemn every attack on coalition forces, and we clearly state that continued fighting dies remains our priority. We are also committed to preserving the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Without the GCPOA, today Iran would be a nuclear power. Thanks to this deal, Iran is not a nuclear power. And we strongly believe 
that it is in our interest to preserve the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action as far as we can. We have been saying in the past, and we continue saying, that we regret the U.S. decision to withdraw from the deal. And we continue believing that this deal is a key element of the global nuclear non-proliferation architecture and critical for the regional stability. So we call on Iran to go back to full compliance with the GCPOA without delay, and we rely on the International Energy Atomic Agency to continue to monitor and verify Iran's activities. We strongly believe on the capacity of the International Energy Atomic to be able to monitor all activities deployed by Iran on the nuclear field. But the current situation has a clear regional dimension and it requires a regional political solution. And the ministers has give me has gave me a strong mandate to carry out diplomatic efforts with all parties, including Iran, to contribute to this des escalation in the region, to support political dialogue, and promote a political regional solution. On this framework, we will continue helping Iraq from any point of view, from the military training, from economics, for security reasons, we have to avoid that the spiral of violence can create a situation in Iraq that can be very dangerous for all of us and destroy years of work and efforts on the rebuilding of this country. That's what we have been agreeing today, and it's opened the door to more work especially on the implementation of this mandate of a strong dialogue with all parties, including Iran, in order to look for a political, regional solution. 